Well, my name is Anne Conifery. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I live and I work in Holland, but uh, uh, Conifery is a very old Irish name, so I'm not Dutch. I'm married to a Dutch man, that's why I ended up in Holland. Um, I'm, like all the speakers, I'm uh, really thrilled to be here today and to be able to talk to you about uh, inclusive tactile design, specifically designing with Braille and tactile graphics. Um, well, if we start off with uh, the question, what's the value of design? Um, the only important thing about design is how it relates to people. Well, I couldn't agree more with uh, Victor Papanek. Perhaps some of you are familiar with, his, um, with him as a designer and as an educator. Um, he wrote a fantastic book, Design for the Real World, and that had uh, an incredible impact um, about how I look at design. Um, Victor Papanek, he advocated socially, morally, ecologically responsible design. And he believed that design is a very creative and an um, innovative practice. And that design has the potential to transform societies, so to actually do some good. Um, the other person who's had a, a big influence on me, uh, on my life, but also me as a designer, especially in more recent years, is my daughter Alana. She's blind and she's 19 now. And um, through her, I really learned what the importance was of Braille. It's um, so important for all those essential literacy skills and for your development in all kinds of ways. Um, when it's, it's quite interesting because when she was little, I also designed a, um, a supportive communication system with her together with um, an autistic spectrum disorder expert because my daughter also has PDD NOS. So it's a very interesting <laughs> and sometimes complicated thing. Um, but I was always very much uh, involved in, in her development. And for instance, that communication system, it, it worked very differently, but um, that was later adopted by school. So we started off with three-dimensional objects and then worked towards two-dimensional objects and ended up with Braille and Braille in a portable system as well. Um, let's move on to the next slide. Um, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because I just don't have time. But um, uh, design, um, th there are so many aspects which are involved in design. I'll, I'll just mention the six criteria. This is called a, a function complex. Um, so we have uh, association, aesthetics, need, time, use, method. And I'm just going to flip forward to the design process. Um, my own things. Sorry, I messed this up. Um, coming with another quote, um, I hope that Mandy can help me to uh, pronounce the name of this Chinese philosopher and writer. Sorry? Tao Lao Tao, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stick to Dutch. <laughs> um, that's hard enough. Uh, the potter's clay forms a vessel. It's a space within that serves. And um, yeah, you can't have one without the other. So um, if you're talking about the design process, this entails a whole aspect of, 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 um, of different things. And um, Basically, what you're trying to do is find this balance between intellect and um, and perception. Um, and um, again, it's all about this really unique relationship between the two. Um, concepts of functionalism, aesthetics and ethics um, are combined so that um, content and, and the form that they are of equal value or at least in, in balance with each other. Um, when you start off the design process, um, very important is to ask the right, the right questions. You can ask questions, but it's finding the right questions. If you don't do that, then um, you don't know what you're designing or how you, you're going to go about that. Um, as many people have said, um, and certainly if you're talking about inclusive design, it's um, 
it's very important to to work with different um, uh, experts, different disciplines, uh, work with people with visual disabilities um, uh, on all the different phases uh, of a design process. Um, don't let yourself be weighed down by experience or conventions. Um, uh, experiment, uh, test. I can't impress upon you how important it is to test, test and test. Even if you think you've got things right, you might not necessarily have got them right. And um, it's, it's a process and um, uh, you, you can modify, develop something further. Um, in this slide, this is... Um, this is something that I'm working on at the moment, is a series of six tactile books for young children. Um, and it's part of, um, it's part of uh, um, the te teaching method to learn Braille. And um, I'm working very closely with the teachers in a school in Holland, a Visio school, and working very closely with the children, of course. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very challenging project, uh, extremely interesting. And it's so nice to be working so closely. Um, move on to there. I think I'm going to go go back. So, what is inclusive design? We've heard a lot about this, and some of these things um, slight regurgitation of what you've already heard, but. Um, uh, it's design which takes into account the diversity um, of people with respect to ability, language, culture, gender, and age. Um, it's um, if you think about recognizing diversity and uniqueness, then um, you could come to the conclusion that mass solutions just don't work. Um, that diversity-supported uh, design solutions. Uh, can be best achieved through uh, flexible adaptive systems. Um, I thought that the last example with the uh, digital braille methods, uh, so advanced as well, so many different aspects um, to customize. I mean, that, that's just great. <laughs> um, another um, um, more hands on um, uh, thing that, or, or, or um, technique which you can use is um, a bespoke manufacturing technique. Um, we all know, um, for instance, the use of 3D printers, uh, where one size fits one, so not one size fits all. Um, design is an inclusive process. Um, this slide, you might be wondering what on earth is this? <laughs> well, this is, um, this is a, a cart uh, which, um, uh, a person with a visual disability uh, uh, has made for me. And this again is something which I'm using in one of the books which I'm designing, it's a, a different book. And so um, I'm not just engaging people with a visual disability uh, uh, to get feedback, but also in the design process itself. So if you can make use of uh, people's skills, then, then you really should do that. Um, inclusive design, has very broad um, uh, beneficial impacts. It uh, can trigger a whole cycle of inclusion. Others can potentially uh, benefit from inclusive design solutions. Um, recently, I listened to a talk by Elisa Roy. She's, um, she's a disability rights lawyer uh, who's also deaf and she studied social design. And she's really convinced that uh, design uh, thinking has so many benefits for all. Uh, she gave a really nice example of uh, text messaging, which was originally designed for deaf people, and now everybody's using it. Um, good to slip that last thing. Uh, why use inclusive design? Um, well, inclusive design, it enables everyone to, or theoretically enables everyone to participate uh, equally, confidently and independently in everyday activities. Um, inclusive design, it's also a celebration of the diversity of people um, in which you can break down barriers of exclusion. Um, 
social design also helps to encourage awareness, greater awareness of the fact that uh, many people have many handicaps. And you might be wondering why I've included this picture with um, uh, three dolls, um, the sort of Barbie dolls. One's got a cane, the other one um, has a hearing aid, and the, the third doll, she has a, um, a sort of birthmark on her face. Um, well, this is um, this is from an organisation called Toy Like Me. They're based in London, and I've um, been in contact with them. Um, that was um, set up by uh, Rebecca Atkinson. She's um, a journalist who's worked a lot for the BBC. She writes regularly in newspapers. She's a, a real activist, and her partner Carol Newell. She has a son with a visual disability, and uh, they believe that. Um, or what they're campaigning for is a positive representation of disabilities in toys. <laughs> and they've actually got um, a Lego uh, to produce toys with disabilities. So you have uh, dolls in wheelchairs uh, with hearing aids, with, uh, with sticks, um, which I think is, is, again, is really, really fantastic. Um, if you're talking about um, a design for a, a larger market, I would have thought that there's a lot of possibilities for um, working with different partners. And if you do that, then maybe you're also making it more possible to fund more projects. So you're making that more viable because at the end of the day, I think things have to be affordable. Um, and I also think that segregated design solutions are not sustainable socially economically or technically uh, sometimes they're necessary because there really isn't anything else and if there is money for it then then you should use it but um, I don't I don't think that's a sustainable approach I've gone through that um, coming to designing with uh, Braille and uh, tactile uh, graphics um, again I think it was um, uh, Spanish lady, sorry, I've forgotten her name, but um, I loved it when I, um, you'd also um, noted the fact that Braille often comes across as being really boring. Well, um, I think uh, particularly Braille, that it's often produced in a, a very clinical and sterile way, uh, almost as if it's some kind of penance, um, instead of being actively incorporated into a design process. Um, I really like to see it a lot more um, high quality integrated design. And if you're talking about design for um, inclusive design, then it has to be high quality because uh, sighted people uh, are really not going to be, uh, they're not going to find, find it appealing enough to work with something that, that, um, that doesn't look good as well, or that doesn't function well. Um, and I think that also you should, um, embrace everyone on equal terms. So for me, uh, Braille should be considered as normal and important as print. Um, yeah. Um, and the other thing as well with uh, all these um, uh, um, auditive of, or possibilities of listening books. My daughter, she just, she loves reading and she wants to read on paper. And I think she should always have the possibility of reading on paper or reading on a braille display because um, uh, listening is not the same as reading. I think people sometimes forget that. Um, uh, designing with braille and uh, tactile graphics, um, uh, I think that, um, it's interesting to explore the integration of different techniques. There are so many possibilities and, um, uh, you know, get out there, experiment, uh, work with different people, work with different creatives as well. Um, um, I was recently in uh, Bristol in the south of England. It's where I studied more than 30 years ago. And now they've got um, a, a huge um, uh, uh, printing research centre there. And I talked to the, uh, the researcher and um, I saw um, lots of things that they were working on. I was so excited. Um, they had, uh, they've got 2.5D printers there. 
Um, so this is um, um, a little bit like 3D printing, but it doesn't come uh, um, off off a surface, so it's not three dimensional as such. Um, it's um, again, it's got lots of lots of potential. Uh, things like uh, using um, laser cutting, uh, combining offset with um, embossing, uh, using um, uh, different um, types of inks, so um, uh, textile inks uh, with screen printing, uh, not just the uh, hard varnishes, which really are very hard, uh, not just working on plastic materials, um, uh, experimenting more. Um, the third thing uh, which I was going to talk about, multisensory forms, I'll come uh, back to that in a, another slide. Um, the, the image uh, Braille, uh, Braille is on misbar. Um, translated, it, it, it means uh, basically that um, uh, Braille is indispensable. This is a very simple, simple example of um, uh, promotion of Braille. So this is was more aimed at sighted people. And here I've left uh, out the uh, the eyes. So um, you know, it, we. It speaks for itself, I think. <laughs> Unique characteristics. Um, obviously, we have to recognize that uh, uh, Braille has very unique characteristics. And because of this, um, uh, uh, you have to uh, research the tactile requirements of Braille. I read Braille um, and um, I often come across uh, the use of Braille um, and, and you know, sometimes it's almost as if Braille has been added as an afterthought, or Braille has been used as uh, decoration. Uh, Braille has been enlarged, or it's been uh, reduced. It's been stretched. It's been flattened, so it's um, it's illegible. Um, uh, even Braille. I also came across Braille which had been um, uh, printed upside down. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the requirements for tactile illustrations, requirements, um, th there's a lot of things that you can read, uh, there's a lot of research that's been done, which is very valuable, and I think you should read that and use that as a base, but again, um, explore yourself and, and test as well. Um, Recognising the unique properties of materials and uh, graphic techniques. Um, uh, just give one example of a graphic technique. If you're using screen printing, I often see that um, the braille dots are really small, and and um, I, th I think, well, why didn't somebody compensate for the the loss in the dimension of the dots? It's it's very easy to to uh, work out how much you have to enlarge that dot so that during the process, if it will be reduced, it will still be at a good size to read under the fingertips. Um, I've got these uh, uh, silicon uh, bracelets which I designed and again um, this material works in a different way. It's not perfect but um, it, it is legible but I compensated for uh, what the material and the production technique was going to do with the braille. Um, if we talk about unique properties of materials, um, okay, <laughs> I. Um, I really love uh, paper, and um, I'm just going to read something quickly. Um, I see, I feel paper, but not the same way as my blind daughter. She strokes, rubs, scratches, smells, even listens to paper. When reading Braille, her fingertips zip across the dots on the paper using a tactile awareness that's incredibly detailed. Um, a while ago, I tested a whole series of papers, maybe more than 20 papers, for a book which I designed for people who um, uh, lost or were going to lose their sight um, at, a, uh, at a later age. And um, I, I uh, tested these papers uh, amongst uh, um, uh, older Braille readers, and they came back with some incredible uh, feedback um, and one of the most striking comments for me was um, uh, one, one lady said that um, uh, this braille, it, it's rough, smooth. 
um, which is a real contradiction in terms, but it was spot on because the paper itself was smooth, but um, it didn't have a flowing effect on the Braille when reading the Braille. And she said to me, gosh, you know, and nobody's ever asked us to, re to uh, test different papers, which, which papers, which materials we prefer. Um, if we want Braille on plastic, for instance, if we want Braille on a uh, swell paper. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to the multi-sensory design. Um, well, I'd be very quickly flip. I'll come back to those stickers. I've, I'll pass out some uh, stickers. Um, this is... Uh, this is a very, um, it, it might seem even uh, trivial, but I think it is a good example of something very small, but uh, something which has been well designed for both sighted and uh, visually impaired children. And uh, the response has been absolutely amazing uh, from uh, teachers and parents. Um, if, I, if I pass them out there, shall I pass them on this side? Just to, um, yeah, they will be in Spanish as well. Do <laughs> um, I've I've um, I've got a lot of information about these on my website, so I won't talk about these now. If I've got maybe half half a minute <laughs> left, um, yeah. Um, Multi-sensory approach to design. Um, this is uh, this is an image of uh, this is a different book that I'm working on, um, and um, uh, this is um, let's get to my right page. This is um, an, a, a very interactive book, and it, the story is about a beach ball, and each book comes with a, a story box item, and I've included that in the design of the cover of the book. So the child opens the book, and then they take out the story box item and then they continue to use that in the story so it supports the story. Um, they have to blow up this uh, beach ball and then deflate it and in doing so uh, the, you encompass the touch, the, the smell, the sound, possibly the taste, maybe the colour. Um, and again, this is something which I'm developing at the moment and testing a lot as well. And these books, they'll be um, with Braille and with print so that the parents can read them with the children and um, also there'll be some instruction in the books and all these books have been uh, written by the teachers themselves so they're part of um, uh, the child's uh, Braille development. Yes, thank you very much and I think okay. we have to, to <laughs> stop there. And uh, I would say time for one question at the most. Perhaps while you are thinking, I want, uh, I would like uh, Mandy and Gro and Elena to come once again <laughs> to, to the stage. We would like to more substantially give us <laughs> our thanks from the conference for your participation. So, so the very famous Fika thing. No. <laughs> Fika thing is on. So we thank you very much. And Mandy, thank you very much. Oh. And then you got the red Thank you. One. Did you want the red one? No. <laughs> <laughs> the whole is up. <laughs> So there are no questions. If, um, but by the way, if anybody is interested um, in collaborating on a project, then uh, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me. I've got some business cards with me. Otherwise, contact me via my site, www.brailledot. So brailledots is one word, uh, dot .nl. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> and now you can go to lunch. <laughs>